Made up of over 13 million acres of land, Wrangell Elias National Park is the biggest national park in America. That's about the size of six Yellowstones. To get here, we need to drive 60 miles down McCarthy Road. It's gonna be a bumpy one. From the end of McCarthy Road, we're gonna take this bridge over to take a shuttle down to Kennecott, the abandoned mine town we're gonna hike to. Root Glacier. This is incredible. Oh, it's so nice. So layer up, it's gonna be a chilly one. Good morning, everybody. We are starting our drive down McCarthy Road right now. I'm pretty excited. We had a beautiful sunrise, which I got to wake up and have some coffee for. Matt told me last night that we wake up at eight. It is seven o'clock and I'm pissed. Pissed. I got this new jacket yesterday at the Alaska State Fair where we had a ton of awesome food. I'm super stoked, super ready to go do some cool hiking on some glaciers. Double dose my caffeine intake. Let's hit the road. One thing to know about the McCarthy Road is it's not managed by the National Park System. They don't really come down here and they're not gonna pave it and take care of it, so do it at your own risk. They recommend bringing a spare tire, a jack, drive slow. It's gonna take about two hours to go about 60 miles, so you can do the math, you can do about 30 miles an hour. This bridge is ridiculous. It's a one lane bridge, and I'm not sure if it's this one, but there was a bridge at one point on this road where there were no guardrails. So it was just kind of like a hold on for dear life kind of bridge. They put some safety in. We made it a decent amount of the way through the McCarthy Highway so far and Honestly, it's not that bad. There are some spots where it's really bumpy and tons of potholes where you really have to pay attention and do some swerving in and out. But overall, it's nothing as bad as what some people made it out to seem like. We're at the Gillahina River right now, about to cross over another bridge and then be on our way. The link. Ooh, that was a wild lynx. That was cool. At first I thought it was a mountain lion, then I thought it was a bobcat, and then I remembered there's something in between the two. That's a lynx. Working on more though. I remember nice I was poor though. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Ooh. You see the drippy, I fit it up. Hop in my car and I get it up. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Alright, so we just paid for our parking pass. It's five dollars for the day. No overnight parking here. Unless you pay for it, but we aren't gonna be doing that. Whoa. Did you just see that just now? Yeah. I didn't see it till just now too. How freaking cool is that? We made it in about an hour and 40 minutes. The guide says about two hours or so, but any vehicle should be able to do it. We have a front wheel drive ProMaster and it made it do just fine. There's absolutely no way I'm gonna be able to do this hike without getting breakfast first. So I'm gonna make us some toast with blueberry chia seed jam that I made from scratch. Before we came here to Rangel Elias, we were actually in Palmer and Hatteras Pass and we went blueberry picking. I made some jam out of it and we've been enjoying it since. So we're gonna enjoy that for breakfast today. Mmm, this is either blueberry or huckleberry jam. I thought it was blueberry. And then someone online said that there were huckleberries. Oh, just so good. Honestly, this is so easy to make. And it's kind of cool that we foraged this in Alaska. It's definitely something we want to do more of when we get down to the PNW. Living off the land in Alaska is, I wouldn't say easy, but it's it's the culture up here. You fish, you forage. It's, I, it's the way of life, the natural way of life. Let's go have some fun. I'm super pumped about going to Root Glacier because of all of the glaciers we've visited so far in Alaska, we have not been able to go on them. From what I hear, this is an absolutely unforgettable experience. The shuttle is right there, so we're booking it across this footbridge, which is required to get to McCarthy Town. Good thing this bridge isn't that long. Thank you. Can we stand in the back or do we have to sit? 
We made it onto the Coppertown shuttle, which will take us to McCarthy. And then there, we're going to take another shuttle over to Kennecott. On to the next shuttle. All right, we are in Kennecott, which is an old mining town. It was formed in 1911 when they found copper nearby. They mined it completely, and in 1938, they shut down the copper mines, and the city soon kind of crumbled down. And then in the 80s, they decided, hey, let's restore it, keep it going, turn it into a national monument and national park, and here we are today. on camera but the glaciers look like a winter wonderland over there. <laughs> there are a lot of ongoing restoration projects to put more life into these old buildings to really preserve them and allow more people to come and learn about what mining was like in the early 1900s. We're gonna explore Kennecott a little bit more after our trip to Root Glacier. So it's fattening up season for the bears and they're out eating all the berries and all the salmon and they're getting ready for winter. So we're seeing a lot of bear poo on this trail. There are a lot of other trails along this area that will take you to the old mines, but we're going to the glacier. Along this trail, you're gonna see so many remnants of the old mine and if you're a history buff this is super exciting and cool if you're not you might not care and it kind of looks like someone just left it here which they did but I think it's pretty cool Matt just saw some moose poop but what I'm most excited about is all of these mushrooms and I've been dying to get into mushroom foraging I have no idea if these are poisonous or not but I do have a few pictures on my phone that I need to cross-reference to see if they are but that'll be a project for on the way back, but really exciting. We're getting close to the end of August. Today's August 21st, and the leaves are already starting to turn yellow in Alaska. It barely feels like we've had a summer with all of this rain and pretty cool weather. So for today to be warm, it's kind of a win for us. And I have to say, even though it's only about 50 degrees, that Alaskan sun definitely hits different. This trail is fairly easy. I really don't need these, <laughs> but I have them for when we get on the ice because it adds more, you know, icy friction. Now that we're close to the glacier, it's starting to feel cold again. So that's kind of nice getting that little breeze because it's like pretty hot today, which we've been hoping for. We're happy for the heat. Oh, we finally made it to where the glacier begins. We're gonna get some micro spikes on so that we can walk up onto the ice. If you don't have micro spikes or crampons, it's really risky. And they really recommend that you have something to put on your shoes so that you have some traction and you don't slip. All right, let's go. We're only like 20 feet onto the glacier. We haven't even gotten to the white ice yet. It's already icy and it's amazing how cool this experience already feels. If you look on the ground, you can see that it's clear. It's all ice. You can kind of see like a little bit of earth immediately underneath that. It's just like blue, white, clear ice. Ice is so satisfying, the crackling and the crackling. It's like slushy ice, but it's hard. It looks like slushy ice, it sounds like slushy ice, but it's like, it's like hard matter. It's, I mean, so cool. It's bright, it's hot. I honestly think putting the jacket on was the wrong move. Walking on this ice is way harder than it looks. If you're wondering if it's slippery, it is. <laughs> when we started our van life journey, I didn't realize how much earth we would get to see. Like, we're standing on a glacier right now. This is like pure ice. It's amazing. <sighs> if you go to Alaska, you've gotta to go to Ruth Glacier and stand on this ice. After the Kastner ice cave debacle. And there it's up. Oh my God, I'm getting the off here. All right, so that got me pretty good. I'm getting my revenge. No more messed up fingers from this glacier or any glacier. I'm reclaiming my pride. 
Matt, Glacier Daddy. This is the bluest water I've ever seen. We're gonna do a little dip. The main goal of this entire glacier trip has been to jump into this glacier pool. I'm so pumped. We have been polar plunging for the past two months in Alaska to prepare us for this moment right here, to jump into a pool on top of a glacier. What's truly terrifying about this pool is that you cannot see the bottom of this pool. It just goes on and on and on and on. We're freaking crazy. Crazy. That's so crazy. This seems like the perfect time to mention our video sponsor, Voided. All right. Here goes nothing. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Usually when Matt's quiet, he's nervous. I'm just gonna go in and just get out. It's so nice. <laughs> How do you feel like as a person? That is like a once in a lifetime opportunity. The bluest water, the coldest water. I'm gonna dry off before I get freaking hypothermia. I'm really nervous. <laughs> we're crazy, we're crazy. I think we're crazy. Are we crazy? Let us know in the comments, we're freaking crazy. Give us a thumbs up if you think you're crazy. I don't know if all of the polar plunging in Alaska really actually prepared me for this. <laughs> You okay? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Blakey. Blakey. I was not prepared for that. I have to say, yours was objectively less cool than mine. <laughs> so less cool. But I couldn't, I couldn't put my head down. Once my body was like, oh no. I was like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Oh my gosh, that was insanely cool. I mean, when can you say that you went to Alaska, hiked up a glacier, <laughs> and jumped in a glacier pool. I mean, my life is complete after this summer. Just kidding, we have so much more exploring to do. Maybe some tea might be nice. <laughs> this experience was just one of those things where it's like, oh my God, I can't believe you did that. I'm amazing, we're amazing, I'm yeah, amazing. I feel amazing. And you know what? Bringing this blanket was so smart because I can just sit on the ice and we don't have to do everything with like, with our butts getting cold. Oh my God. One of the best parts about this voided blanket is that the bottom side is like a sleeping bag material and then the top side is nice and fuzzy. We've been using it a lot in the van lately when we're just cuddling up on these rainy days. And we also got to use it by an awesome campfire with some great company. So meat and cheese it is. Big chunk oh, of cheese you got. Nice like glacier <laughs> temperature cheese chunk. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers baby. Mm. Can you imagine this is our life? This is so cool. Bone apple tea. <laughs> to Alaska. To glaciers. To glacier pools. To micro spikes. Mm. To micro spikes. To micro spikes. <laughs> <sighs> All right, let's head back to Kennecott. One thing that's absolutely amazing about this whole field is that's all glacial ice. We are finally back in Kennecott. That was kind of a hard hike towards the glacier side. The actual ice was pretty slippery once you got past the first few yards. That polar plunge was definitely the highlight of the whole trip, even though I kind of freaked out and didn't go all the way in. It's fine. This trail also has so many mushrooms on it. It gets me really excited to like do some more research and get into mushroom foraging. I don't think I've ever gone through an abandoned town before. It's a little eerie, kind of cool, and kind of cool to just guess what the stories were here and kind of imagine all of the people who lived here and worked here and everything that they did on a day-to-day -day basis in these buildings that are now pretty run down and pretty much broken. So just like on the way in, we are on the way out and we have to take the shuttle and they come pretty periodically. It's from Kanaka to McCarthy Center. They come on the hour and we have minutes to spare.
very interesting little fact that we just learned about McCarthy is that year round there are only 50 residents who live here full time. It's small. It's a small town. It's small. We're hungry. We're gonna get some food. A restaurant of choice? The potato. You're probably thinking to yourself, Megan and Matt, you guys already went to the potato in Valdez. We talked to a lot of people and they said that the place to eat in McCarthy is the potato and this is the original, the potato. The menu already looks different than what we saw in Valdez. They don't have chowder, which is really sad, which is basically why I came here. But I will gladly eat any of the rest of this stuff. So McCarthy was formed when the Kennecott Mills were established and all the workers needed somewhere to go to do all of their extracurricular activities that they weren't allowed to do because Kennecott was a mining town. Brothels, bars. First thing up is the cheesesteak and you bet your butt we're gonna be diving into this right now. If you guys haven't caught on, Matt and I pretty much share every meal so that we get different things and we can try different things, but also because it's fun to share with your partner. I haven't had beef in a long time. Since we've been in Alaska, we've been eating mostly seafood, but your girl loves some beef. Hot. Having a beard is tough. Mm -hmm. Hey, Philadelphia, I think Alaska's got to got, got run for your money. No. I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is really good though. We got smoked salmon pizza, there's green onion, there's capers, there's lemon, there's a cream sauce. Oh, this is gonna be really hot. This is just out of the oven. They make this pizza in a trailer, right outside the restaurant. That's unique. That's special. Those aren't good things. That's scientific. <laughs> I always appreciate a thin crust because you gotta get the fold. You gotta have the pizza taco. Uh, if you can't fold your pizza, Suck. I don't feel super confident with the description unique scientific. But it is unique and scientific, is it not? Mm. That is unique and scientific. How is it? Great. It's great. If your preference isn't to fold your pizza, I don't think you suck. I just think you're wrong. So I just found out this beer is called Taterade and it's only served here. Literally only served here. The brewery made it for these guys. We're gonna chow down, and we're gonna drink up, and then we're gonna go home. There is a second road that goes into the park, but unfortunately due to weather conditions, we are unable to go in there with our van. If we got a truck with four wheel drive, we might be able to, but that's it for this video. So I hope you guys really liked it. Visit it yourself. It's a really unique place, especially the little town of McCarthy. And hiking to Root Glacier is unreal. A top 10 core memory experience. If you want to see us travel some more, give us a thumbs up. Let us know down below what you think. Subscribe to our channel and we'll see you in the next one. We're gonna take the bridge from McCarthy to McCarthy Town. Yeah. We're on a million mile travel journey and this is how many miles we added with this road trip. Thank you for watching our video and make sure you're subscribed to watch us travel one million miles.